Hi, it's Mimi from HeyMimi.com. In this video, I'd like to show you how I got my old video footage off of these eight millimeter video cassettes and burned them onto DVD. There's several ways to get it onto your computer, but in this video, I'm just gonna concentrate on using this Magnavox DVD recorder VCR that I got at Walmart for, I'd say, 100 to $150. While it's mainly intended to transfer VHS video tape to DVD, I noticed that it does have line in recording and so I decided to use this to quickly back these tapes up onto DVD. I'm using this old Sharp View Cam. It's a VL E765. It's just got this single audio video output that I use to plug into the line in on the Magnavox recorder. There are other options that you could use to bring video into your computer. This is an old Dazzle Video Capture 90. It's kind of old, so I ordered this Elgato Video Capture on Amazon for about $80, and it's fantastic. But I want to back this whole library of videos up quickly, and so this is the solution. I've decided to, to back things up unedited onto DVD just to get it done quick. There's all kinds of options on how to hook this unit up to your television and also to do the line in from your camcorder. There's coax, as video out, component out, and also AV out, and the same goes for the line in. All those options for the line in as well. Other than HDMI, there is an HDMI in. So the way I hooked it up is the AV out to my TV, and then I, I could have hooked up the AV line in from the back, but I decided to hook it up from the front for the reason you'll see here. My Sharp View Cam has uh, audio that is mono, and these three AV hookups with the red, yellow, and white are meant for a camcorder that is putting out a stereo output. You can connect with that, or you can connect with just the yellow and the white, but I'm gonna show you some of the hits and misses because it's not as easy as you would expect. So if you plug in your camcorder with the corresponding colors here and it's not working, don't assume that you're not gonna be able to use this line-in connection. To find a sequence, that's going to work for you. First we're going to go to your TV and set the source as AV. Then you're going to come back here and hit play on your camcorder even before you start plugging in these AV cables. So I start with the three prong connection and I try just using two of those because I know that there's no stereo sound. As you can see I keep moving the plugs around because I'm not getting the audio or video connection. So I decide to focus on just finding the correct video input. And I find that by putting the white plug into the yellow video input. When I try different combinations of trying to find the audio input with the yellow and the red plugs, I don't have success with it. And eventually I figure out that it's this output connection to the camcorder because it really isn't the original cord that goes with this, obviously. So once I fiddle with that AV output from the camcorder, Order, I find that I can get audio and video uh, just by wiggling it around. I also find that that red plug doesn't do anything at all since the camcorder is mono. So now that I think I have the perfect recipe for hooking this thing up, I decide to use the cable with just two, just two inputs, the yellow and the white. And I think that all I have to do is switch them out, put the white and the yellow and the yellow and the white, but it doesn't work with this one. And now with the two prong, I put the yellow in the yellow and the white in the white. And what do you know, I have audio and video from my camera. So the lesson from this exercise is pay no attention to the color of those plugs. So now let's get to the next hurdle and that is navigating the setup of the Magnavox recorder. Get your remote and hit the setup button and go to general settings and hit OK. Then use your arrow down button to go to video and hit OK. Then you're going to go to video input. And if you've plugged it in the way I have shown here in the front, you're going to choose front, video in front, and hit OK. Now, one of the most frustrating things I find about this setup is figuring out how to back out of a screen. Hitting return usually works, but if that doesn't work, then try hitting setup just to exit yourself out. Then you can go back into setup and go to your recording options. I'm not really gonna try to walk you through all of these because to tell you the truth, I don't really understand them all. Obviously, you don't need to bother with this dubbing mode because we're not using either of those. Auto finalize, I've found that I need to finalize it at the end, no matter what I tell it here. So I'm not gonna try to advise you on this. Make recording compatible, of course, you wanna turn that on so that it's compatible with every kind of player, I guess. And once again, you'll find yourself in this dead end and have to figure out the mystery 
history of how to back out of this screen. So I think I just hit setup to get out of it. Next I loaded a DVD-R into the Magnavox. I'm sure there's other type of discs that you can use, but check the manual. Uh, this is what I use, DVD-R. Next I'm going to hit play on my camcorder and check to make sure everything's showing up on the TV screen correctly. And when I'm happy with that, then I'm going to hit record. You can hit it either on the remote or you can hit it there on the Magnavox. You'll see record show up on the screen and you'll see it show up this little red dot on the screen and you'll see the little red dot here on the Magnavox recorder. At this point, you could actually just walk away and let it record the full two hours or whatever it is you have on your tape, or you could change the channel. You could start watching cable on your television and just let this run its course and save the entire tape to one full chapter on your DVD, which is what I'm going to do because I don't want to sit here and babysit this recording, stop and start it at every scene change. But if you feel like watching the tape, then it is kind of handy to do that. You can make a chapter for each scene and it's just easier to find what you're looking for. It is time consuming and I figure I will just do that when I edit favorite little scenes out on the computer. If the DVD that you burn from this is going to be your final production and you're not going to bring it into the computer and edit it further, then you might as well make those chapters now if you have the time to do it. My goal right here is just to get all these tapes backed up up onto DVD just as insurance so that I don't have to worry about the tapes degrading. So now the video has played out and you can see that the Magnavox is still recording. You can push stop here on the unit or you can push stop on the remote control. And now it is processing all of the recording and writing it to the disc. And that goes pretty quick. But don't forget that even though it says it's writing it to the disc and even though it's going to get to 100% and look like it's done, you still have to finalize. So let's do that now. Here's what you'll see next. So what you're seeing here is one big chapter with almost two hours of video on it and then the empty space and other hours worth of space left on that DVD. At this point you could go back and record another 50 minutes worth of video and save it as a second chapter but what I'm trying to do is transfer one tape to one DVD just so I know what I have and have not yet transferred. So my next step here is to go in and edit this chapter so that I can choose an index picture that's representative of this chapter. And it will automatically choose the first frame, but that's not always the best of what's in the chapter. So you have an opportunity to pick out a frame. Okay, you're gonna go to index picture, and when you think you see a frame that you like, and you wanna freeze that and save it as the index picture, then you're gonna click OK, and here, I didn't do it quick enough and I do not want this because my kids aren't in it so I'm going to say no and go back and wait for a better shot. So you're going to click OK. Just wait for a better shot here, there. That's better. That's got the boat, the captain, the two little deck hands. It's kind of confusing. There's nowhere where you say save or anything. You're just going to hit return, see if that gets us out. So now it is writing to the disc again. What I think it's doing is saving again with that index picture. This goes pretty quickly. You can do this as many times as you want, as long as there's room on the disc. You're not gonna finalize until you wanna add nothing else. So here we are at 100%. I don't wanna add anything else to the disc. I want to finalize it so it can be played on other machines, Xbox, PlayStation, DVD players, computers. You could play it on this Magnavox without finalizing it, but it's not going to play anywhere else until you finalize it. So let's do that. Now we get kicked back to this screen again. And once again, we find ourselves in this dead end without the magic code to escape. So try hitting return or stop. I think at this point, when you want to go finalize, you're going to hit stop this time. And it'll either bring you to setup or you're going to have to hit setup again. You're going to arrow down to disk edit, hit OK. And here you could edit the disk name, but I really don't like trying to type in alphabet with a remote control. So I'm just going to go on to finalize and click yes finalize the disk okay now this process will take a while I don't know how long a while is but uh, it takes longer than the other processes that we've seen so far maybe five minutes while this is processing I want to point out one thing that I forgot to mention or that you may be wondering about is what do you do about this source is it DVD or VCR and it's really neither it's the line in so I just left it at DVD I figure it really has nothing to do with the VCR so I just figured it would just 
pick up the line in, which is what it did. Maybe it'll work either way, but that's how I had it set up. So once it finishes finalizing, then this is what you'll see. And you can just come back over to your Magnavox and hit eject. And then just label your disc with a Sharpie.